Hi guys, it's me Chazzer HD and welcome to the race review for the 2021 Italian Grand Prix. A Grand Prix that was very eventful, especially in the first half of the Grand Prix. And of course, this incident right here, Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton, is going to go down as the moment from this race. And what an iconic moment it is. Very similar to your, you know, Senna Prosts or uh, Hamilton Rosbergs and, you know, crashes like that. Very very iconic and i think we'll definitely remember this for years to come of course i will analyze this in a separate video coming out tomorrow at um, 12 p.m uk time but it wasn't just that that was the story of the race there's plenty of other things uh, that really we need to talk about because you know just phenomenal drives great results for certain teams as you can see on the left hand side of the screen just a really great day of racing um, at the Italian Grand Prix, and a very good Grand Prix, and the first good Grand Prix we've had since the summer break. Of course, at Spa, there wasn't a race. Zandvoort wasn't really that special, um, and this race, I think, has pretty much delivered. And, of course, now we'll get into the events of the race and how certain teams and drivers did. Let's first, though, get into the race results for your 2021 Italian Grand Prix. So Daniel Ricciardo wins for McLaren. His first podium for McLaren, his first win for McLaren, and McLaren's first win since 2012 and the 2012 Brazilian Grand Prix. And it's also McLaren's first 1-2 since the 2010 Canadian Grand Prix, which was 11 and a half years ago. That's how long it has been since McLaren have been this competitive and you have to say, McLaren were genuinely quick enough to be right up there. They were very, very strong. We saw that really during the entire race. So it's not just a, a lucky win because Hamilton and Verstappen retired. They genuinely were good enough and absolutely do deserve it. Lando Norris in second, Valtteri Bottas third. Great drive for Bottas coming from 18th. Uh, on the grid to third, and then Charles Leclerc P4, Perez P5, Carlos Sainz in P6, and then Stroll, Alonso, also great drive from Russell, ninth in the Williams, Ocon 10th, Latifi in P11, Vettel 12th, Giovinazzi 13th, Kubica 14th, 15th Mick Schumacher and your retirements, Nikita Mazepin, Lewis Hamilton, Max Verstappen, Pierre Gasly, and Yuki Tsunoda. And now, let's get into this Grand Prix. So, of course, there's only one place to start. Now, when it comes to my opinion on the incident, I will not be giving that right now. I will be giving that in the video coming out tomorrow. I need to still go over the, you know, certain screenshots of certain angles and stuff like that. And, I, yeah, like I said, I still need to go over that and just determine absolutely what my view of the incident is i do have a say most of my opinion already down really or view of the incident already down um for the incident but i just want to you know have another look at it just to make sure uh that what i think of what i saw is still the case because you know if my opinion's any different then of course i need to include that in the final product but let's first get into um Valtteri Bottas quickly so Bottas very good drive could have been better his attempted pass on Sergio Perez towards the end of the Grand Prix was I mean <sighs> the overtake he did at the second chicane was good but just on that exit not getting the exit right and you know not keeping Perez behind was a big blow because I think Bottas really had the pace to win but once he let Perez get back through, I don't think really he ever stood a chance of getting past Perez again because I don't think that Sergio Perez was going to let him have a really another real opportunity at passing him for third place, even though, of course, Perez with that uh, five second time penalty for passing Charles Leclerc um, off the circuit, he obviously wasn't in play for that position but Bottas drove well could have like I said could have done better but still drove well 
uh, for third place. A very good result considering he did start in 18th. And if he just didn't have that penalty bot ass, I think he would have easily won this race today because his pace all weekend has been brilliant. And the Mercedes car has been the quickest car. And I think that is the biggest thing as I now come towards Lewis Hamilton. And we'll get into his race and how he did up until the crash. That's the biggest thing from Mercedes' point of view that is probably infuriating for them is that this weekend, and we saw it absolutely clear on Friday, and even to a certain degree, uh, degree on Saturday in the sprint race, Mercedes had easily the best car this weekend. There is no doubt about that whatsoever. But at any point in this race, or not at any point in this race rather, were they ever in a good enough track position to utilize it? And were never really in clean air. And when they were, I think it was only for one lap or two laps with Lewis Hamilton. And when he did get in clean air, we saw how quick the Mercedes was. It was very, very good. And I think, really, that's going to be the biggest disappointment from the weekend is failing to utilize that great speed. Because, really, with the the extra speed they had compared to Red Bull and everyone else this weekend. They should have been easily winning the Grand Prix this weekend with Lewis Hamilton, just like last year, of course, but it wasn't to be. But we'll just go through Hamilton's race. So, of course, he tried to pass Lando Norris um, on the first lap, didn't do so. Tried to actually pass uh, Max Verstappen um, on the first lap. He did actually get past Lando Norris, if I'm remembering it correctly, uh, the exit the first chicane on the first lap. Tried to pass Verstappen, and when it comes to that particular incident, I don't really think there's anything Max Verstappen could have done. I, I just don't think Verstappen, you know, I don't think Verstappen pushed him off the track or anything. I just think Hamilton tried his best to go around the outside, but Verstappen kept enough of his car ahead, or not just ahead, but alongside, didn't allow Hamilton to get his nose clearly in front. And Hamilton just ran out of space. I don't believe it's because Verstappen just, you know, cleared him off the track. And then Hamilton came out in fourth place behind Lando Norris and then was stuck behind him, tried to pass him and uh, had a really good go at passing Lando Norris, but was unable to do so. Then right after Max Verstappen um, had his pit stop and a very long pit stop of 11 seconds, Hamilton then passed Norris, very quickly pulled away and then came in for his stop. Now, of course, the incident, you know, we'll get into that later. But I have to say, Mercedes' pit stop did not help because it was a 4.2 second pit stop. And that's what? A second and a half, really, slower than it needs to be. And if they had got the pit stop right there, then Hamilton probably would have come out comfortably ahead of Max Verstappen. To the point where he wouldn't have been having to position his car in any way, shape or form to defend from Max Verstappen going through the first chicane and probably the second chicane as well. So we do need to mention that because, like I said, um, that stop could have been better. And if it was better, it would have led to Lewis Hamilton probably... I don't, I, honestly, I'd say, I, I think Lewis Hamilton, if he had not been knocked out of the race today, because of how quick he was, I think he would have won the race today if he was not knocked out of the race. So I think, without a doubt, that um, pit stop that led, of course, to the incident was just a massive blow for him uh, going into then turn one and the incident uh, with Max Verstappen. And then, of course, was knocked out of the race. And, um, yeah, in terms of the championship, I mean, we might as well go on to Red Bull now. In terms of the championship, it does benefit Max Verstappen a lot, I think. And I think, really, Red Bull, maybe not from the Constructors' Championship perspective, because Mercedes have, again, outscored Red Bull uh, this weekend, just like they did at Zandvoort. But... In terms of the Drivers' Championship, Max Verstappen, I don't think, will be that fussed, really. I mean, of course, he'll be disappointed that he, you know, 
exited the Grand Prix the way he did and has his own views that I've already seen on the incident, but when it comes to the championship, I don't think he's going to be that disappointed, to be fair, because if you look at this weekend and the way the weekend's gone, Mercedes have been clearly quicker than Red Bull, and Red Bull... If you look at the starting grid we had, Red Bull were actually quite fortunate to be in the position they were with Max on uh, pole position because Red Bull were in no way, shape and form, or form rather, um, in a position to be like that because in Friday qualifying, they were half a second slower almost than the two Mercs on the front row. So, like I said, Red Bull were a bit lucky to be up in that position and then... Even without Max's slow pit stop of 11 seconds, I still think Lewis Hamilton would have had definitely enough pace to... And, you know, even without, again, the accident between um, Hamilton and Verstappen, I think Lewis Hamilton, in the Mercedes especially, would have been easily quick enough to be beating Verstappen in the race had there been no crash between the two. So... Yeah, I think Red Bull, in view to the Drivers' Championship, and Max Verstappen, in view to the Drivers' Championship, I think will be not too bothered about what happened. Because, like I said, they were not that quick this weekend. And I think considering the speed of Mercedes and considering how the race was looking, really, after the first 10-15 laps where Max Verstappen was stuck behind Ricardo and Hamilton was only two or three seconds behind on a harder compound of time and was always going to be quicker in the second half of the race. I think Red Bull really got away with it today. But in regards to Verstappen's race, um, yeah, poor start. He got passed, of course, by Daniel Ricardo. Never really put up a fight against Ricardo. I mean, of course, he tried to. I'm not saying he didn't try hard enough, but he couldn't really get close enough. And then his pit stop after Ricardo pitted first, was abysmal of 11.1 uh, seconds, which, of course, didn't help uh, his uh, race. And whether he had the incident with Hamilton or not, that pit stop eliminated any chance of him winning the Grand Prix. It absolutely did, because he was then behind Lando Norris as well, and there was no way, he, if he couldn't pass Ricardo, there was no way he was going to pass Lando Norris either in the Grand Prix, considering how quick McLaren were and how quick the McLarens were down the straights as well. There was just no real chance of a McLaren being passed in a straight line unless you were miles quicker through the corners, which I don't think the Red Bull really ever was miles quicker. So, yeah, I think um, with Max Verstappen, after that pit stop, his... Race in regards to winning the race was pretty much over. But with Hamilton's then slower stop, of course, Verstappen tried to overtake him. And the incident happened. And like I said, I will give my view on that tomorrow. But like I said, Max won't be anywhere near as disappointed as Lewis Hamilton. Put it that way with what happened. Now with Sergio Perez... It's hard to say that Perez drove well today. He was decent, I'd say at best. He was decent. His pace was definitely a lot better. And I think maybe if the safety car didn't come out for Hamilton and Verstappen's incident, maybe Perez could have late on, um, you know, launched a challenge for the podium. I don't know. But I just think, you know, after the safety car came in, uh, Perez... Not just his pace, but also that overtake he did on Leclerc as well was just just not good enough. I mean, that overtake was just such a clear breaking of the rules. And I don't understand why Sergio Perez did not, you know, yield position because it was a clear uh, breaking of the rules. He was always going to get penalised for that. Um, and then, yeah, his pace compared to McLaren, just not good enough. Really not good enough. and. I just think maybe it's not necessarily Perez this weekend, but Red Bull this weekend have been really poor, I have to say. Really, really poor. 
I thought coming into this Grand Prix, considering how they've been at a higher speed tracks this season, and you guys, you know, you know how they've been at higher speed tracks this season, such as the Red Bull Ring, where they were so dominant. Um, I thought they would be absolutely the favourites for sure. At least Max Verstappen would be in a commanding position like he was at Zandvoort, for example. But at no point this weekend did we, uh, with Red Bull did it look like they were ever really in a commanding position. Um, I mean, yeah, they had the grip position for the race, but we never thought coming into the race because of the lack of speed they showed the entire weekend, we never thought that they were just going to, you know, get into the lead, run away with it, like Max Verstappen has done plenty of times this season. And I just think their pace this weekend was just really poor. It really, really was. And I know um, Christian Horner, I think, came out and said uh, that, you know, he thought Mercedes would do especially well at this track, which I don't really understand, to be honest, because, like I said, Red Bull, especially with Honda powering them, have been very good at circuits similar to this. So it, I don't really understand why Red Bull were coming into this race you know, not really thinking they were going to do that great because they've been pretty good at these, uh, say, less technical, uh, faster racetracks in 2021, such as Bahrain, the Red Bull Ring, uh, also Baku with the long straights there. They were very strong in the race, uh, certainly. So yeah, I think Red Bull coming out of this race, I mean, championship-wise, they've not suffered probably enough compared to what it should have been uh, if Mercedes had got the result they should have got on pure pace. I think, though, the lack of pace they had this weekend is a slight worry, though, because if they show this again in Russia, which, of course, Mercedes, historically speaking, should be top uh, dogs in Russia, but if they are, are, you know, three or four tenths of a second away, at least from Mercedes, then that is a worry going forward for the rest of the season because, yeah, maybe, and yeah, Mercedes have only won four races this season and they haven't nearly capitalised as much as they should have uh, Mercedes on mistakes or problems for Verstappen and Red Bull. But if that speed difference continues at a few more tracks this season, with it still five points, you know, Verstappen leading to Hamilton, eventually Hamilton will overturn that if if Mercedes still hold that type of advantage over Red Bull. So I am keen to see whether Red Bull can, um, you know, show that pace we saw at Zandvoort, that front-running pace that we saw, you know, in Austria, Bahrain, um, Monaco, you know, tracks like that. It would be um, great if they could uh, do that. As uh, yeah, just, sorry, I was just distracted by something on the TV. But um, yeah, Red Bull. Like I said, their pace does need to improve. It really, really does need to improve. And I think I'll move on to the next uh, few teams on the grid so let's go on to uh mclaren so mclaren uh winning the grand prix today um yeah great result for them great drive their speed was absolutely incredible and if you watch the race today you have to say that really they were just comfortable today. They never really seemed like they were ever really um, going to be beaten in this, um, in this Grand Prix. Daniel Ricciardo, when he got into the lead, was just absolutely um, incredible. His start was brilliant. Starting on the inside and in P2 uh, for the, um, on the grid for the Grand Prix is such a... Uh, fantastic thing it, it really really is because you know having the inside line for turn one at the uh, Monza track is such a massive advantage because as we saw with um what do you call it with 
the Verstappen Hamilton incident. If you're going to overtake around the outside, say at the start of a race, it's very, very hard to do so if you don't have your car even, say, a third of it ahead of the other car. So Ricardo was already in a great position, really, for um, the Grand Prix. Um, so yeah, Ricardo, great start, got into the lead. By the way, if you're wondering why I had a bit of a pause there, it's because there's been a very bad injury in a football match. It's Leeds versus Liverpool. Um, I'm guessing it's a broken leg or something. Um, and I was a bit worried then, so that's why there was a bit of a pause there. But it seems as though he's, uh, uh, well, I wouldn't say okay, but yeah, that's, sorry for the hesitation there. Uh, but yeah, got into the lead and... What I loved about Ricardo today, and of course the Hamilton and Verstappen incident really did help McLaren solidify that they were going to win the race today and get a 1-2 as well, is that um, with Ricardo's, you know, again, like I said, Hamilton and Verstappen incident really did help, but with how Ricardo was driving today, he just didn't look like he was ever really going to be beaten. In the race, he never at any point looked like he was really under serious threat. He, I mean, you look, you know, look in the first 20 laps or so, Max Verstappen, I mean, he had DRS a lot, but he never really got anywhere near the back of Ricardo to ever really have a look at overtaking him. Ricardo was just so quick, so comfortable, so clean. And just so consistent. And I think his drive really today, and we saw it as well in the um, second bit of the race, definitely in the first, uh, last, sorry, 10 laps or so, that um, with Ricardo, he was just so almost similar to Sebastian Vettel in, you know, in the older days of, of Sebastian Vettel's career where he won so many races where... He's not, you know, using all of the track. He's comfortably within the track limits and all of that, but just so consistently quick that it's so hard to beat that person if they're driving in that way. And that's the way Ricardo really was today. And I think from McLaren's point of view as well, it's great that they had someone of Ricardo's experience to be up there because Ricardo has led Grand Prix plenty of times before and has no as we've seen plenty of times before in the last few years, he has no real um, concern or anxiety of leading a Grand Prix. So, yeah, Daniel Ricciardo, brilliant drive, looked comfortable the entire way through, and I think Ricciardo was absolutely the driver of the day today. For Lando Norris, good drive, very good drive. Um... But I think he will be disappointed, Norris, because given that he has been so far ahead of Ricardo this season on pure pace terms, for, for the Grand Prix, you know, now we've come to a Grand Prix where McLaren were genuinely quick enough to be right up there competing for victory. For him to not take it, it almost seems a bit wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously happy for Ricardo and all of that, but... Like I said, because of how good Lando Norris has been this season, you'd think Norris would be the man who would take that victory. So I am kind of feeling sorry for Norris because he has been so good this season. And of course, he did out-qualify Ricardo in the real qualifying session on Friday. So who knows what would have happened if it, we'd gone from Friday qualifying straight into a Sunday race. But yeah, I think I think Norris... I mean, he'll be happy, of course. Second place, that's a great result. If he, if you offered him second place before the start of the Grand Prix, he would have snapped your hand off. But I think considering his teammate won, and Norris was actually right behind Ricardo for a, quite a few laps after the safety car restart, I think Norris will feel a, a tad disappointed that this weekend he didn't have that extra speed to... To beat Ricardo and of course win the Grand Prix. But overall for McLaren, fantastic weekend. And like I said at the end of the race, watch along. McLaren are back, and it is great that McLaren are back. Now let's get into Ferrari. Great result for them. Saying that, because of McLaren's result, it's not quite as good 
as it needed to be. Uh, they did score still 20 points, but with McLaren scoring 44 points, that is, of course, um, overshadowed is the, um, you know, Ferrari's good race. And they did have a really good race. We have to, we have to you know, make sure to mention that. If you remember this time last year, Ferrari were three seconds a lap in the race off the pace. If you go and watch the first 15, 20 laps, they were that bad. When this weekend, they were only half a second, maybe at worst, off the pace of the leaders. Massive step forward, and considering this should be their worst track of the season, in terms of the characteristics of the circuit, fourth and sixth is a really good result. But because of where McLaren finished, overall, they're going to be disappointed, aren't they? But yeah, I think good results still. Charles Leclerc, again, brilliant drive. He's been so good this season. Carlos Sainz finishing in P6. Good drive from Sainz, but I... There is something weird about Sainz this season where... And maybe it's something to do with him obviously being new to the team, but there's parts of certain races where he'll be very quick, but then there's parts of other parts of, you know, certain races where he'll be, compared to his teammate... Just nowhere near the pace and miles away from where he should be. I mean, Zandvoort, he dropped over half a minute behind his teammate. And he couldn't even really explain how he lost, you know, so much pace in the, um, in, in, in his car. And we've seen it plenty of times this season. And again, maybe it's something to do with, um, you know, him being new to the team and all of that. But I can't explain it because we've never really seen it from him. If you look at his uh, days at McLaren against Lando Norris, you never really saw Carlos Sainz in the middle of a Grand Prix just go to sleep and, you know, drop loads of seconds behind his teammate or lose loads of seconds to his teammate, whether his teammate was ahead or behind him. It's very weird, and I think that's definitely the biggest thing that Carlos Sainz needs to improve uh, going forward, probably for next season, because I don't think he'll be able to do it really on a major scale uh for the rest of this season but he needs to make sure he gets back into that say similar way he had with uh mclaren where he can be consistently lapping at a good speed the whole way through a grand prix instead of dropping off in the middle of a grand prix and being you know half a second a lap slower than his teammate because it's it's just not it's not representative i feel as to how quick he, um, you know, really can be. We've seen Carlos Sainz put in some very good laps this season in qualifying and have some good races, but I just feel as though with Sainz, there's, there's more. There's more there. Um, I do think Charles Leclerc is a better driver, but I still feel as though with Carlos Sainz, there is more there that he can show in that Ferrari. But fourth and sixth is a good result. Now for Aston Martin, for this man on screen, Sebastian Vettel, terrible, terrible Grand Prix and really uh, quite poor weekend. Um, I will say I'm very surprised that, uh, what do you call it, that Esteban Ocon in that incident with him and Vettel, very surprised that Ocon got a penalty because I don't really see what Ocon could have done that differently. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I, I, I don't really see what Ocon could have done that differently. But really, Sebastian Vettel all weekend has, has just been pretty poor. Um, and really, since that rained out Belgian Grand Prix at Spa, Sebastian Vettel has had two really quite poor weekends in a row. Uh, Zandvoort, I mean, overall as a team, Aston Martin were pretty poor. But, I mean, here, he was thoroughly beaten by his teammate Lance Stroll, who was comfortably quicker, more consistent, and just the better driver. We know, of course, Stroll at the Italian Grand Prix is great. And by the way, special shout out to Lance Stroll. Thought he did very well today, finishing in P7. Very important result for um, Aston Martin. They do now gain, it's only one point on Alpine, who of course are in fifth place, but all points matter. Uh, but very important finish for him. But yeah, Vettel has just not seemed... Um, the same since that Belgian Grand Prix. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. He just hasn't quite... 
he hasn't really put in any laps or really at any point in the races really just looked that good. It's almost looked a bit more like the Vettel of last season at Ferrari. Just, like I said, not really that good. But Aston Martin, I think their points haul is, I'd say, good enough considering um, the last couple races they've had. So I think, yeah, this is a good uh, result for Aston Martin. But with Sebastian Vettel, like I said... I think it should be better. Definitely should be better. And I think he should have been really finishing in the top 10 today. Alpha Tauri, we'll just very quickly go through them. Uh, of course, both cards retired. Um, Yuki Tsunoda, I think, might have had a suspension issue. I don't know for sure. But I've got to say, Alpha Tauri, um, what a bad weekend they've had. Um, the pace absolutely was there. Gasly, you know, qualifying up in sixth place. Really, it should have been you know, a top five, top six finish for Gasly. And given that Hamilton and Verstappen retired, Gasly probably could have gone on the podium in this Grand Prix if Friday qualifying was converted in terms of the starting grid to the uh, start of the Sunday race. But yeah, just a terrible, terrible Grand Prix weekend for Alfa Tauri. And considering that Alpine, their biggest rivals and the constructors have scored five extra points, it's a very poor showing at a track where Alfa Tauri should have been absolutely outscoring uh, Alpine by, they double the points. And yeah, very, very poor result. And in Russia, they have got to improve, but I don't think in Russia it probably will be that great for them uh, because I think that circuit, you'll probably see Alpine uh, probably as a better team. Talking of Alpine, I think, can't really say that much on them, to be honest. They didn't really have the pace to finish in the points today. Um, and really the only reason they finish in the points is because of retirements from, you know, Hamilton, Verstappen, Gasly. Uh, like I said, Alpine just weren't that quick this weekend, but have come out with a really good result. Eighth and tenth, five points, and have pulled away in the fight for fifth in the constructor. So I can't really complain about Alpine um, this weekend, but I think they've kind of gotten away with it a bit. Uh, considering Alpha Tauri were looking so strong in uh, practice and qualifying on Friday as well. But five points, very, very important points all this will be for the Alpine team going forward. Uh, Alpha Romeo, Giovinazzi, I've got to say, um, even though I really like the guy, very stupid in what he did, um, cutting across Carlos Sainz on the exit of turn, uh, was it five? The exit of the second chicane? Very, very stupid, just not focused, not aware of what was around him and deserved to get the penalty and deserved the damage he got as well for just stupid driving. Got to say, though, Robert Kubica, I thought, had a good weekend. In terms of his pace compared to, say, people around him, I thought he did actually pretty good. So I think Robert Kubica, given his physical limitations that we know, I think he can be proud of himself. I really think he can. And he's shown that he definitely still has plenty of that talent remaining. But again, um, he has his physical limitations. But I think had a, a good Grand Prix and I think has done well as a stand-in for Raikkonen. And really, looking at the last two races, I don't think you can say that Raikkonen would have done that much better than Robert Kubica in the last two races because Alfa Romeo... Well, this season have been just really poor and their race performances have been really disappointing. And it was today. Uh, and finally, pretty much for Williams. Um, yeah, great day for them. Russell finishing in ninth. Two more points for them. And obviously that further secures that they're going to finish in eighth in the constructors. I don't really see how any other team, uh, or any not any other team, but any team behind them can really compete in... Uh, the constructors, Alfa Romeo and Haas, for really uh, eighth place now because Williams are on, I think, is it 22 points? Uh, yes, yeah, so yeah, I just don't see how Williams can really um, lose that position. Great drive from Russell today. I do, though, feel sorry for Nicholas Latifi because in the whole safety car and pitting melee, somehow lost position to his teammate Russell when Latifi was ahead of Russell on the grid and ahead of him in the race, and was a few seconds ahead. So I think Latifi, honestly, got a bit unlucky there with what happened. And I think if luck had 
gone his way a bit more, I think it actually would have been Latifi scoring uh, points because Latifi's pace was pretty good in the Grand Prix. But uh, it is Russell scoring points and uh, good for him to celebrate his new Mercedes contract with a good points finish for him. And Williams, like I said, further consolidating eighth in the Constructors. Great to see Williams finally making progress. And finally for Haas F1, just want to say that the key to Mazepin is an absolute idiot. Taking out Mick Schumacher. Um, yeah, I have no idea what he was thinking, but there you go. But yeah, Haas F1, of course, absolutely terrible at the back of the grid. Now, finally, to finish off this race review, I'm just going to quickly read out the standings between uh, the, or not between, I was going to say Hamilton and Verstappen. I'm going to quickly read out the standings in the drivers and constructors championships i can't put it on screen right now because i don't have the graphics but i will quickly read it out so make sure to listen carefully so max verstappen is still leading by five points from lewis hamilton hamilton of course second bottas is third norris is fourth perez is fifth and then you got leclerc sixth carlos Sainz in p7 ricardo is now uh i'm pretty sure he was anyway in eighth place but now he's a lot closer Leclerc and Sainz ahead of him uh, within, I think, 20 points or so. Um, and then Gasly in 9th, Alonso 10th, Ocon 11th, Vettel 12th, Stroll 13th, then Sonoda, Russell, Latifi, Raikkonen, Giovinazzi, Schumacher, Kubica, and Mazepin. And then in the Constructors' Championship, Mercedes are in the lead by 18 points, which is not actually that big. And it could easily go back in Red Bull's favour really at any time um and then yeah mclaren now up to third mclaren are now 14 points clear of ferrari in third place and of course that's mclaren's first win of the season by the way just want to mention that i did actually in coming into the season say that i thought mclaren were going to win a race and yeah i just want to <laughs> remind you guys of that because i did predict that at the start of the season and i think i said it would be a kind of a crazy race which we did have but mclaren honestly were that quick that they deserve to win it on pure pace. Uh, Ferrari fourth on 201 and a half points. And then you've got Alpine fifth. Now 11 points clear of Alfa Tauri in sixth. And then Aston Martin a seventh. Aston Martin, by the way, are 36 points behind, uh, behind Alpine. I don't really see how Aston Martin are going to climb any higher than P7 in the Constructors. Very poor season for that team. And then Williams are eighth on 22 points. Alfa Romeo ninth on three points and Haas 10th on zero points for them now that is guys the end of the race review for the 2021 Italian Grand Prix just want to say uh, thank you guys for tuning into all the content this weekend and remember that tomorrow at 12 p.m uk time I will be uploading my analysis of the incident between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen and then on Tuesday at the same time 12 p.m uk time I will then upload a compilation of the best bits from the race watch along stream. And I think, given how good uh, the race was, I think you guys will probably enjoy it. So, like I said, that will be coming out on Tuesday. And then after that, the next piece of content won't be until Saturday the uh, 25th, I believe, of September at uh, 9.45 a.m. UK time, I think, for the practice three watch along for the Russian Grand Prix. So those are the next three piece, uh, pieces of content, and hopefully you guys will all join me for that. And again, thank you guys for coming on to the streams and all the content this weekend. And if you are new, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Uh, and as well, hit the notifications bell. Don't forget to share this video as well, and uh, share this channel, and as well, smash a like button. And don't forget to, as well to join our very active Discord server of about 500 members. It'd be great if you guys could join us there. But guys, until my incident analysis video tomorrow, which I know you guys are eagerly waiting for, until then, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.